Pharma Futurology 2016 and Beyond, which is a pretty dangerous uh, title, but there we go. Yuri Rosenman from BT Global, Global Services. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Good morning again. And uh, it's, uh, it's fun to be back. As, as a matter of fact, uh, I have been away from uh, BioIT world for about 10 years. Uh, uh, the last time I was here in was in 2002, actually, in this room, I believe. So it's, uh, it's good to be back. Uh, the interesting thing is uh, I was hoping that there would be more changes, you know, that we would be talking about different things uh, in 10 years. And, um, you know, I wouldn't say unfortunately, but uh, the numbers have changed. You know, we went from, you know, gigabytes to terabytes, from terabytes to petabytes, uh, you know. Uh, but at the same time, some discussions remain somewhat uh, the same. So. I'm going to try to elevate discussion this morning just a little bit and to talk to you about the future. Um, so uh, picture this. It's 2016, and the world is joined up. It's even smaller than it is today. Technology has already changed the, the face of the world as we know it today. By 2016, though, we will be living in a society that is truly convergent, a multimedia wonderland, where everyone can communicate with everyone in whichever way they please, much more easily than they do today. Voice, video, and data can travel seamlessly around the globe in real time. People will be ex able to exchange ideas and messages seamlessly. I want, I want to outline what I think this will mean for pharmaceutical industry. Briefly speaking, there are three main areas which I think will be important for pharmaceutical industry over the next 10 years. Development of healthcare network, disruptive technology, and increasing globalization. I will talk briefly about all three of them today. Firstly, we should consider what the healthcare universe will look like in the next 10 years, and what, pharma, what role pharmaceutical industry will play in this space. Healthcare will become a commodity in the same way as food and energy are today. Health needs will be met on a daily basis according to the requirements and demands of our patients. In other words, emerging technologies will lead to a more joined up society. Healthcare will follow suit. Indeed, this is already happening. As hospitals and healthcare providers adopt electronic patient records, especially in the UK, particularly in the UK. Patients will become more closely connected to the healthcare network as technology allows for more tailored treatments. An efficient, well-informed network of organizations and individuals will monitor and maintain our well-being, and patients will be involved in helping themselves. Hospitals and clinics and physicians will be connected electronically, and there will be universal access to medical records and resources, including genotypic and phenotypic information. The relationship between doctor and patient will become closer, more on demand, as convergent technologies allow us to reach those that we allow us to reach at any time of the day or night, any time we choose. At the same time, that relationship will become more distant, much more virtual in nature. Technology will facilitate telehealth, allowing patients to avoid traveling to hospitals and clinics in many situations that it is conceivable today. So what impact will this have on pharmaceutical industry? Pharmaceutical industry must make dramatic changes in the way they do in their business model uh, in the next 10 years to ensure that they can effectively participate in this healthcare ecosystem. The industry must participate in all facets of this changing world to guarantee future success. Pharma companies must start modifying their strategies now to employ enhanced information technologies to strengthen the future connections to physicians, regulators, governments, vendors, and more, more importantly, patients. Pharmas already communicate effectively with lawyers, 
lobbies, doctors, but crucially, not that well with patients. This must change. The industry is often isolated, operating in a vacuum, well removed from the end user, the consumer. In a world where patients will be more self-determining and will want direct dialogue with companies making their drugs. Of course, governmental regulatory agencies, uh, there are many regulatory concerns around pharmaceutical companies having direct contact with patients. So farmers cannot do it alone. So pharma must talk to the end user as much as they talk to doctors, healthcare providers, regulators, and governments. As the healthcare network connects more closely with patients, expectations for what the network can do will be raised. Patients will become more educated. Consumers will use technology to find out about the latest treatments and developments in medical fields. But it's not just consumers who are raising stakes. Increasingly, governments are doing the same. And um, pharmaceutical companies must become more transparent in terms of how they do drug development and set pricing. And they're pushing the right drugs to be developed and distributed uh, to the right people on top of it often to those who can't really pay for them. Also, payment for the drug companies will no longer, payment to the drug companies will no, no longer be determined solely uh, by the number of units delivered. It will be based on the success of the products. In UK, the National Institute for Clinical Excellence, NICE, has already approved a scheme where, where it sees the drug Velcade provided by the NHS on the agreement that the cost will be refunded by Maker, Jensen, Seleg if the drug fails uh, to provide the right level of treatment. So the expectations placed on the industry are rising and will continue to do over the next 10 years. Pharmaceutical industry has to step up and meet the challenge. The industry must be fully integrated into the network. The role of technology. Technology will be at the heart of the changes in the next 10 years. As computers increase in capability and power and applications become more and more distributed, cloud-enabled, pharmaceutical companies will increasingly use them to design and ultimately test drugs virtually. Even clinical trials will eventually be done in silica. Predictive clinical protocol design will eliminate phase two and phase three failures. Pharmas must embrace in silica development. As the aircraft industry has already done to reduce the cost and increase the efficacy of drugs in development. Getting to new science, to getting the new science to market quickly and accurately with the, with the help of in silica modeling will help the consumer expectations and increase trust in the industry. The virtual world will also become important. Alternate all online realities could play host to get-togethers within the industry, bring opinions and ideas from across the globe together without the need for physical travel. For example, new intervention technologies will be developed to help ensure patient compliance and persistence. At present, patients often forget to take their medication or give up the course of treatment too early if they fail to respond to the drug within a short period of time. <clears throat> Future technologies could also use subdermal implants to release drugs internally, or even implanted microchips containing capsules of medication which could be programmed to release several medications at the right time for maximum therapeutic effect. Drug delivery could be individualized and much, made, made, made much more effective. Healthcare technology will become smaller, less visible, but more powerful. This is already being seen in the unobtrusive passive sensors are being fitted into the homes of the vulnerable, elderly, to alert, and, uh, to, to alert appropriate help when a problem is detected. Our Liverpool pilot is a good example of that. Feel free to stop by the booth and talk to me about this pilot. Further in the future, these sensors will be worn in clothes or even incorporated into the human body, sprayed onto the skin or implanted just under it. Our own skin will become active in monitoring our health and thus preventing disease. Electronics could be printed onto the skin. This would be 
enable monitoring of blood chemistry, individual biomarkers, and nervous responses. These electronic circuits could be linked wireless to networks for early warning to permit pharmaceutical control from the clinic. And more medicines will come with their own diagnostic tests, heralding the start of true evidence-based medicine. As our population ages and the kinds of illnesses and diseases uh, that will be encountered will become more disparate. Thus, we must find the ways of treating them. The days of blockbuster drug, the one-size-fits-all, will truly be over. And much more tailored solutions will strive not just to treat conditions, but to prevent them. New technologies will monitor healthy people to create a baseline of normal, against which drug developers and healthcare providers can measure the success. So healthcare will ultimately be much more about being healthy as it is about treating disease. The focus will no longer be on the cure, but developing medications and treatments that mean cure is never needed. Pharmas must be proactive, not reactive. Because the pharma of the future has the potential to be much more about than just drugs. It can be a whole health and wellness provider that embraces new technology and joined up thinking. So finally, I want to talk a little bit about globalization. So what will change in 2016? We will, have, we will see brands travel around the world and the industry reach, reach right around it. Goods are designed in one place, manufactured in another, and sold somewhere else. The supply chain now covers countless miles and numerous time zones. So how, what does it mean for pharmaceutical in this, in this globalized future? Emerging markets are already increasingly able to challenge the developed world monopoly in pharmaceutical industries. Countries such as India are already developing cheaper generic versions of drugs still under patent protection in the West and exporting them legally to the countries that need them. This is most evident in the treatment of HIV, where countries such as Brazil have struck deals to ensure an affordable supply of antiretroviral drugs in emerging markets. And by 2016, there will no longer be isolated ivory towers of expertise in drug development located in the developed world. Already countries such as India and China are adding pharma to their rapidly growing manufacturing industries, and it's perfectly conceivable that they will be developed specializations in distinct area pharmaceutical industry. This can improve the efficacy of drug development, but this increased sharing of knowledge and data will also mean organizations will have to work harder to guarantee security of data and information. So with the new opportunities of globalized network world, there will be also new challenges and the security is on top of, it, of the list. Information must be shared, but it also must be kept safe from harm and corruption. Farmers will be responsible for the entire journey from the development to the delivery to the patient. It must guarantee the pedigree of the product every step of the way. So in conclusion, I will say pharma has a big, big part to play in health, healthcare ecosystem of the future. Innovation technology will open new doors and opportunities if pharma must be ready to embrace them now or be left behind. Development in the IT, medical diagnostics, remote sensing, and multimedia and smart semantic analysis will enable fully joined up healthcare. Emerging markets will provide an opportunity. Differences between countries and cultures will be embraced positively and the area specialization will be developed. We know futurology is a difficult game to play, and it's hard to predict what will happen and what will actually change. But predictions do not necessarily have to be 100% accurate. By looking at the facts, analyzing the potential outcomes, as I have done today, and by setting a strategy accordingly, we should be able to plan for the future, whatever it may be. Thank you for your time.